Yesterday, Adam Stern reported that NASCAR is more heavily considering moving the number placement on the door from the middle down closer to the rear tire, just like they did in the 2020 All-Star Race. I'm not going to mince words here. I think this is a horrible idea. There's the surface level reasoning that fans absolutely hated it and have stated it repeatedly and that they don't want it changed. NASCAR fans have always liked tradition and this is one of them from the beginning of NASCAR that they haven't changed yet. But this isn't the only reason that I think this is a bad idea. I want you to look at my buddy Eric Eastep's thoughts on the matter. Yesterday on Twitter, he said, companies are looking to engage with consumers in 2020. Just slapping your logo on a race car isn't enough anymore. Only dumb, fading companies would pay more for this kind of thing. Instead, both the teams and NASCAR should be focused on new ways to activate sponsorship. He's 100% correct. When you look at NASCAR's community right now, you'll notice that even though NASCAR has shown the ability to grow a younger audience, it's still a relatively small young audience. And this is where you need engagement the most. NASCAR's dinosaur business model right now seems perfectly content with slapping a few stickers on cars and calling it a day. But when you look at the trends with some of the most major companies that NASCAR has had, they look to almost all be parting ways. Miller Lite is now gone. PepsiCo is now looking to be gone. Home Depot, gone. Lowe's, gone. Kellogg's, gone. These are major, major companies, not just for NASCAR, but in American culture in general. They bring relevancy whether you think so or not. And they're far from the only ones to leave as well. Those are just the ones I could think of off the top of my head. Now, it's not all doom and gloom, though, either. There have been sponsors entering the sport in the past year as well. Many of those higher profile ones, though, tend to be special cases that are really outside the box with thinking and engagement. The ones I keep thinking of and coming back to are Bush's beer sponsorship, Ryan Vargas's TikTok deal, Haley Deegan's sponsorship machine, and the rise of Bubba Wallace at 2311 now. Looking at Bush Beer sponsorship, they have stated that their partnership with NASCAR has seen visible help in improving their sales. They have been outside the box with their paint schemes, changing them up with legitimately good paint jobs almost every week. Also, they know how to market Kevin Harvick, their driver. Harvick can be a fun person who really can bring engagement out in people on social media. But at the same time, he also can be an old-timer, stick-in-the-mud type of driver. Bush uses this to their advantage, though, making him a straight man to the meme-worthy cars and jokes like the Millennial car and the Gen X car. Plus, at the track, they are very visible and open with fans. But not all sponsorships are going to buy in the way Bush Beer did. This brings me over to Ryan Vargas' TikTok deal. Now listen, just from the times that I've talked to him on streams or in DMs, I can tell you that Ryan has worked his ass off for this TikTok sponsorship. Seeing it in effect though, it really has added engagement with a major brand that younger people like myself actually really, really like in general. This sponsorship being a platform helps people get on board as well because they themselves can easily get on there and have fun. So when you reinforce the aspect of fun, you will get a ton of feedback. At the time of recording this video, Ryan has almost 150,000 TikTok followers now. He's well on his way to get there. NASCAR has benefited with the youth audience there. Vargas has benefited from seat time and a following. And TikTok has benefited by opening up to a new audience. Now, sometimes the driver really pushes the sponsorship forward. This is where Haley Deegan really shines. Putting it bluntly, the girl is a marketing machine, and most would also say that she is a likable person in many ways as well. Deegan also has star power in social media and her name, and she has millions of followers across all forms of social media. Now, I understand that not all drivers are Haley Deegan. She's special with marketability in that aspect, but her rise to stardom and sponsorship has really been something that can be emulated. Marketing teams need to make strategies for drivers to engage more with the fans and brands other than being a cardboard cutout clone that just lists off sponsorships after the race. This would help make NASCAR sponsorship more attractive to new and returning sponsors. Now, there's also the example of the rise of Bubba Wallace. Bubba has had a ton of sponsorships signed on, 
Now, some of this also has to do with the fact that he's in association with Michael Jordan. If you can't sell a brand with MJ, you're doing something wrong. But what has really helped Bubba Wallace get the attention of corporate America is his activism in social and political issues. This one, while offering big exposure though, can be troublesome as you will be splitting your audience. But if a brand like Root Insurance, which has hinged its marketing and partnership with Bubba off of his activism, then go full speed ahead if you want. The money and exposure will be there in some respect. Now, another way that sponsors can attract audiences is by marketing the sponsorship in NASCAR as a fun thing. Sponsors used to do this regularly in commercials, but for some reason, it's just they've fallen away from it. Here's a few examples to what I'm talking about. Ever dreamed of driving a real cup car? Well, now you can. This is the fan controller. What the? Tony, what are you doing? It's possessed. That was completely inappropriate. lucky I am to be a NASCAR Winston Cup driver and how fortunate I am to have a great sponsor like Napa Auto Parts because Napa understands quality and value and the importance of having a friendly knowledgeable staff and it's at times like this looking around at the empty grandstands and listening to the silence of pit road that I realize I'm at the wrong track I'll call you when I get to LA I think you forgot something. This isn't mine. Now, why am I showing you three commercials? Well, because these three commercials have stuck with me over time. When I think of Budweiser, Toyota, and Napa Auto Parts, I think of these things. I think of something that gives me a nostalgia, but also something that makes me laugh. Literally the last time I went out to get beer, I got a six pack of Buds. Hell, my first drink was a Budweiser. This may also be because ads like these have left a subconscious good association with these brands in my brain. If you can show other brands that there is a market, but all you have to do is get a little out of your comfort zone to make this money, well, I think they're gonna do it. Because I'm proof right here, and many others are proof, that if you can get people young to think and associate well with a brand, they will buy that brand. Just subconsciously, they want to. So if you can make them go for it, why not? Simply put, overall, NASCAR sponsorship needs to be reformed for many, many ways. The days of stickers being put on a car and calling it a day are over. And seeing how after 15 years of failing to connect with the youth, they finally seem to be hitting on something, they can't let it go. They can't let this slip out of their grasp. They're on the precipice of greatness. It's time to capitalize. Now I wanna hear your take on this. How do you think NASCAR sponsors can do better at supporting the sport and their drivers? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like this. And until next time, have a good one.